Hey guys, I uh, got a nice quick one. We have a 2005 Toyota Tundra. This is the V8 4.7 liter. And uh, you know, they, they had a code reader hooked up to it and it came up with an oxygen sensor code and they wanted us just to give it a quick look. So we did a code scan and sure enough, we have three times of a P2197 uh, oxygen sensor stuck lean bank two sensor one pending current and history well you know what if you see that and really you only see that chances are you're safe to throw in in there but let's do some quick due diligence so we'll fire it up we'll look at our live data right now i'm in factory mode uh sometimes when you're just dealing with air fuel ratio issues um, sometimes I find it's a little easier to go with generic because uh, I find sometimes you get better better numbers. Some of these vehicles with their Lambda numbers, sometimes they can kind of be skewed and they can all be different. But you know what? We'll just go with this, kind of see what we see. Uh, da -da. So we got the short terms, long terms. Let's go with some downstreams and we want the one as voltage and as voltage okay so we'll just kind of see what we see looks like those downstream should start um heating up and start working pretty soon and does anything jump out at us uh, at the moment not terribly so so we'll just kind of uh give it a little bit of a rev hold the idle up a little bit come on okay hopefully you can see that our bottom pad this is our bank two oh get that out of there that's our bank two sensor one it is changing from two volts or so two and a half volts up to four volts and if we see our short term is changing from say minus 10 to positive 10 or so and if we look at um, bank one it's staying rock solid and we are get that steering wheel just you know 1200 rpms or so and it's just jumping back and forth back and forth back and forth now if it were staying really, really um, low, like if, if it were changing at a sustained RPM, like say it was going from kind of normal to uh, indicate a lean condition, that could be something such as a, a broken exhaust manifold, or a broken bolt, or you know what, an exhaust leak. The exhaust pulse comes by, grabs fresh air, brings in fresh air, kind of comes and goes, it can, right? Um, but that's going to kind of hold it a more steady, if you know what I mean. That's It's going to go from, you know, the 3 volts down to 2 volts or so at a sustained RPM, but it's not going to be flying back and forth. And if you look at it right now, just at idle, um, compressor's off, all that's off, no extra loads on the, the engine. With it switching back and forth like that, um, because these these aren't these are wideband sensors right so they're not a normal oxygen sensor they're supposed to go up down sorry i'm a little close they're supposed to go up down up down up down it's supposed to keep pretty straight like if you look at sensor bank one sensor one it's barely moving that's how these wideband sensors work whereas it's not supposed to be switching up and down like this so um really there's not much that can be done about that there's or sorry not not that there's not much that can be done about that there's not really much else that could be other than just a failing sensor um the amount of time it will take to kind of go after wiring and all that sort of stuff when you know 99.99 times out of a uh, hundred for this exact issue with what it's doing right now it's going to be a sensor so you know what of course we'll look at the wiring while we're there um but you see something like that that's simple enough order up a sensor plan on throwing a sensor in there of course if you see anything blatantly obvious while you're there you can change that and save your sensor but return the sensor i mean but 
you see that plan on throwing a sensor in there anyways uh it really can be that quick and simple you know just sitting in your seat with your scan tool there's really nothing else uh realistically speaking that would cause that okay so unfortunately right when i went to go put the oxygen sensor in um the customer came in and was kind of hanging around so i wasn't able to film it um but uh you know what? it's pretty straightforward um everything's nice and open so like everything i don't assume i know which one is which i always look it up so and usually when i look it up i'll just type it in your make model into google uh, plus firing order so you you kind of get a an idea of the cylinder layouts uh, you, you see a bunch that all look the same so okay there you go that's it so whichever bank has cylinder one that's bank one and then the other bank is bank two so in this case bank one is on the driver's side bank two is on the passenger side um so then we go underneath the vehicle thankfully it's nice and wide open uh you know the connector's right there uh, it's a little you can get your fingers on it pretty good it's not the best to try and get a tool on there so if you get a connector that's full of dirt and yeah that might suck but mine came off without too much uh fighting and uh yeah the sensor was able to get a um my my good socket on there with some room with a ratchet and thankfully it came right out i didn't have to put heat on it or anything like that um just a little crack and boom comes out put the new one in there and away she goes so yeah i wasn't able to film it but um nice and straightforward it's wide open and mine came out easy peasy hopefully if you if you're doing this on your vehicle hopefully you have the same luck so uh let me carry on with the uh verifying the repair okay so we're back uh we changed the sensor um i'll put up a couple pictures i didn't get a chance to film that but it was actually really straightforward uh easy peasy came out really easy thankfully um right there so bank two on this is on the passenger side as always um i just type it in your make model into um, google with firing order and i just kind of look it up um, i never kind of trust that i quote unquote know and yeah um connector is really easy to get to the sensor is really easy to get to uh that one and that one and it came out it cooperated with me okay so as we were saying before we put it in park and just hold it up the throttle a little bit and yeah, straighten out the steering wheel so that's about where we were before right around the 1200 or so rpm and we can see that our short term for bank two is staying pretty steady it's not switching back and forth between lean and rich um, it's just kind of holding at the minus four minus five and our air fuel ratio voltage is staying pretty close you know 3.2 to 3.26 right uh, it's not really moving outside of that range it's kind of mirroring the the range that the the bank one sensor has so huh, just that simple that would be a fix uh not everything is complicated not everything is convoluted uh this one's just a straight straight simple oxygen sensor replacement most of them are when you see stuff like that you know i just wanted to mention because you know a lot of the videos that you see on the internet and the youtube you kind of go to the nth degree to diagnose them you know what if you see something that's mostly working and it's kind of responding but then it's sort of glitching out it's almost always the sensor you know what count on selling a sensor count on ordering a sensor count on replacing the sensor and you know what when you're there you do your look if you don't see anything you throw in the sensor yeah if you see something you can return the sensor or you can throw it in if you want to be preemptive but there you have it that's a fix just a simple sensor replacement anyways uh as always just want to say thanks for watching uh we'll catch you on the next one and bye for now